Hey everyone, and welcome back to this class, Modern Deep Learning in Python, Deep Learning in Python Part 2. In this next section of the course, we are going to cover all the major concepts in this course in PyTorch. So everything we just did in Theano and TensorFlow, we are also going to do in PyTorch. In this lecture, we're going to look at how to write a plain feedforward neural network in PyTorch. As you'll see, the basic high-level steps remain the same, just the syntax is a little different. So let's just list out all the high-level components we think we're going to need. So we know we're going to have to build the model, and that's going to consist of a series of neural network layers. We know that we're going to have to combine the model output and the targets to get the loss. We know that we minimize the loss using some optimizer like Atom or RMS prop. We also know that this is a modern deep learning library like Theano and TensorFlow, so the structure is going to be very similar, where we have symbolic variables for things, and it's only when we want to make calculations that we pass in actual data. And so the main thing we need to do in this script is the training loop, where we're going to break down our data into batches and then feed in each batch one at a time. And as usual, once we're finished training, we would like to plot our loss and accuracy as a function of iteration. So let's look at the code. The relevant file in the course repo is pytorchexample.py. First, let's check out the imports. So as usual, we have numpy, matplotlib, and util for getting the data. For PyTorch, we're going to need the top-level torch. Then we also need the variable class and the optimizer module. So in the code, the first thing we'll do is grab the data. This is non-torch specific. We always need to grab the data. Next, we're going to build our model. And by the way, I added a note that it's very helpful if you look at the Keras example first, because what you'll see is that the model building process is very similar for PyTorch. So we start by creating an object of type sequential and then we add all our layers to this object. How we do that is we call the add module function, which takes in two arguments. The first argument is the name of the layer, so you can call that whatever you want. And then the second argument is the layer object itself. So as you can see, we have different layers for both linear transformations and activation functions. In other libraries, you might see the linear layer called dense or fully connected, but I'm sure you know by now that these all mean the same thing. They're all just linear transformations of the form wx plus b. Next, we're going to create a loss object. Note that this is just an object. It doesn't know about your model output or the targets, which we don't even know how to get yet. We also pass in the argument size average equals true, which means divide the sum by the number of elements to get the average. As you know, this makes the loss invariant to the batch size. Now, of course, there are other possible loss functions, but the one we're interested in right now is the cross entropy because we're doing classification. So you can go to this link I've posted in the comments if you want to learn about the different loss functions available in PyTorch. Finally, I want you to keep in mind that since this is an object, we can presume that it probably has some useful instance methods that we'll be using later in order to actually calculate the loss. Next, we create an atom optimizer. Again, this is an object, and we're passing in the model's parameters as an argument. Luckily, the model already has an instance method called parameters, which returns these. And as before, there are other optimizers available, such as plain gradient descent, RMS prop, and so on, so you can check out this link I've posted in the comments for more information. And also as before, this is an object, so we can presume that it probably has some useful instance methods that we'll be using later in order to actually do the gradient descent step. Next we have the train function. So I think this is probably the most confusing part about PyTorch. You just have to remember all the steps required for you to do a step of gradient descent, since it looks very different from Theano or TensorFlow. 
In my opinion, Fiano and TensorFlow are a lot easier than PyTorch in this regard. So first, let's take a look at the arguments to this function, which, by the way, is just for one step of gradient descent. So we have the model, which is our model object, our loss, which is our loss object, and optimizer, which is our optimizer object. Next, we have inputs and labels, which are torch tensors derived from NumPy arrays, representing the current batch of training data. We'll see exactly what I mean by that in the near future. So the first thing we need to do in this function is turn the inputs and labels into torch variable objects. This seems weird since they're already in the form of torch tensors, but let's roll with it. We pass in requires grad equals false since we don't want to differentiate with respect to these variables. Now, one thing you should realize is that this code actually works even if you don't change your data into variable objects, but using variable objects is generally recommended. Basically, it can help make things more efficient. In future versions of PyTorch, this distinction may not even exist, so keep that in mind. Note that I've left lots of links in this script so you can read more about these things if you want to. Next, we call optimizer .zero grad. Why do we need this? Notably, you don't have to do anything like this in TensorFlow or Theano. So the idea with this is, PyTorch automatically accumulates gradients, which means the gradient for a weight matrix is, is set to its current gradient added to whatever its previous value was. That might seem strange, but it's useful for certain applications, such as recurrent neural networks. In any case, most of the time, we want to zero this out. Next, we get the output of our model. Note that this is just like TensorFlow, where we bring back the logits rather than doing the softmax at the end. This is because the loss function for PyTorch also requires logits. And note that for both the model object and loss object, we have an instance method called forward, which does the actual calculations and returns an output. So basically, we can think of output as a scalar, which represents the numerical value of the loss. But in actuality, it's still a torch object. And so it has instance methods, and the instance method we're interested in right now is backward. What this is going to do is calculate all the gradients with respect to the loss. Next, we call the optimizer.step function, which actually does the gradient descent calculation. So if we were doing plain gradient descent, this would just be parameter minus learning rate times gradient. Now, it's a little odd that PyTorch separates these into two different function calls, but you can read more in this link that I've posted here. And finally, the last thing we do in the train function is we return out.item, which returns the actual number that represents the loss. All right, so the train function was a lot of work. Hopefully the rest of the script is more straightforward. Next, we have the predict function. Again, we want to turn our inputs into a variable first. This is not required, but recommended. Next, we call model.forward, which gives us back the logits in the form of a torch tensor. In order to get actual numbers out of this, we want to grab the data attribute and then call the numpy function on that to get the result in terms of a numpy array. From there, we can call argmax to get the actual class predictions. Finally, we're ready to run our training loop. But first, we need to convert our data into torch tensors, which are currently in the form of numpy arrays. So to do that, we call torch.fromNumpy. And then we call the float function or the long function to specify the data types of each array. Next, we have a short training loop. So we set epochs equal to 15, batch size equal to 32, and the number of batches equal to the number of samples divided by batch size. Next, we're going to create some empty lists to keep track of our costs and test accuracies. Then we enter the main training loop. So inside the training loop, we grab our input and label batches. So notice how I can use the same type of indexing as I would with a NumPy array, even though what we actually have is a torch tensor. So this should look very familiar if you've been following along with the rest of this course. 
Next, we call our train function, which returns the cost of the current batch. And at the end of each epoch, we also call predict on our test data and calculate our test accuracy. Then we do a little printout of the cost and accuracy, and then we save these to our list for plotting. When we're finished training, we plot the cost and accuracy. Now you'll notice I've done something a little strange here. We have the train cost, but we have the test accuracy. This is because I want you to do an exercise. So ideally, we would like to have a plot where we can see both the train and test cost versus iteration at the same time, and we would like to have a plot where we can see both the train and test accuracy versus iteration at the same time. So see if you can modify this script to do that. If you want to check out my solution for this, see PyTorch example 2.py. So let's run this and see what we get.